Hey there. So, Daytona is coming up this weekend, which is, what weekend is this? Uh, October, October 15th and 16th. This is like the big race of the year for all of CCS, which is the series that I race in. This is the race of champions or their national championship race of the year. Uh, so there's gonna be not just the Florida people there, but people from uh, all over the United States. But with that said, I've been traveling for the last couple of weeks, so I haven't had a chance to really work on my bike. So this would be a good opportunity actually to just kind of finish up, uh, get my bike ready for Daytona. The main thing I have to do, other than putting it back all together, is to change the gearing of my motorcycle. All right, so why do we want to change gearing? Every track has a different characteristic about it. Some tracks are really tight and twisty, but don't have a lot of long straights, while others are completely opposite, with a lot of long straights, but not a lot of twisties. Daytona kind of falls in the latter, where there is essentially just long, long straights. I mean, probably the longest straights uh, you can find anywhere. They're, they're technically not straight. Uh, they're technically like curves, the NASCAR bankings, but essentially like, you know, you're gonna treat them like straights. All right, so in any case, changing the gearing helps us to kind of take advantage of those characteristics. In the case of Tona, I need to gear my bike uh, in a way that really takes advantage of the, the straights. Now, the transmissions of our motorcycles are normally, and, I, and I, I'm gonna say about, you know, like 99.99999% of bikes, the transmission of the bike is actually with, encased within the engine. So it's, we're not gonna be changing individual gear ratios. Who wants to split their case every time you go to a different track? Not I. So the way we change gearing on our bikes is basically through uh, the final drive ratios, the front sprocket and the rear sprocket that goes on your wheel. And changing those things will allow us to basically, basically lengthen the gears or shorten the gears. So we can make the gears, you know, either really, sh all the gears like really short, that, that accelerates really fast, but doesn't have a lot of like a really good top speed, really low top speed. Or we could actually lengthen all the gears so that acceleration is kind of sacrificed, but your top speed is uh, maximized. So in this case, like I said, in case of Daytona, where basically you're going on, you have these incredibly long straights in the, in the form of NASCAR banking, NASCAR turns, we want to maximize top speed because since we spend so much time on the banking, uh, on the straight parts, uh, we're going to need all the speed we can get. So let's go ahead and gear for top speed. Okay, so now that I'm ready to change here now, like I said before earlier, uh, there are two places that you'll have, or you can do any changes to gearing, and that's the front sprocket and the rear sprockets. Because the rest of your transmission is, uh, is encased within the engine. Now before we go and you know, just throw in the biggest front sprocket we find and the smallest rear sprocket that we find, or whatever combination, to get the theoretical like best top speed, we also have to take into account that power plays a part in this. If you don't have the power to reach the theoretical top speed, there's no point gearing it that high. You're just wasting acceleration at that point. In any case, all right, so like I said, two places, the front sprocket and the rear sprocket, which is on your wheel. I already have a gear ratio that I'm, I know I'm gonna be using for, for Daytona uh, because I've been there before and I have a pretty good idea what it is, as well as asking some other people. But some people might be a little more secretive, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what sprockets I'm gonna go with, but uh, but here's a rule of thumb basically with how sprockets kind of work. With the front sprocket, the smaller it is, the better it caters toward acceleration. The bigger it is, the better it caters toward top speed. The back is kind of like the opposite. So if you go bigger in the back, that gives you more acceleration. And if you go smaller in the back, it's gonna give you more top speed. They say roughly that one tooth in the front is equal to about three teeth in the rear. Roughly, it's, it's probably a little less than that. There is a website, I think called gearmanner.com that gives you, that you put in your bike and then you put in your front sprocket size, rear sprocket size. You can do individual gear ratios too and it'll give you like basically your top speed in every gear and your top, oh, top theoretical top speed 
and all that good jazz. At Daytona, I want top speed. I'm gonna go with a bigger front sprocket and a smaller rear sprocket. I don't generally change gearing all that often. The gearing that I have right now, which is 15 teeth in the front, 44 in the rear for R6, tends to actually work pretty well almost in most places that I've been to. So I don't like to change things. I could probably get a little bit more at each track if I really wanted to, but for now, like, I'm focusing more on like my riding technique and everything else. So I don't really like to change gearing all that often, but for Daytona, it's an absolute must. Not only you know to do better, but also to protect your engine. If it's like just bouncing off the rev limiter, like a long way down the straight because you geared it too short, you could really hurt your engine that way. And Daytona is actually known to blow engines quite a bit just because the amount of stress that you're putting on the engine going pretty much top speed for extended periods of time. All right, so let's go ahead and change some sprockets out. So we'll start with um, the rear sprocket since it's easier to do. And then we'll move out to the front. With the rear sprocket, it's on the wheel. So you gotta actually take your wheel off. All right, and then there's six nuts Six knots holding it down. Okay, so in the case of the rear sprocket here, um, it used, in the, for the R6, okay? I'm using a 17 millimeter socket. I'm putting on my impact because uh, I wanna spend the least amount of time as I can doing this. I don't think this torque wrench, uh, not the torque wrench, this impact, even though it's one of the stronger DeWalt impacts, is actually strong enough to take that off. I have a, an air compressor and air impact. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna use that. Oh, like butter. And then, comes right out. And just like that. Now, um, as you can see here, this is nice and shiny. Uh, it's a Vortex rear sprocket, um, and it's aluminum, made out of billet aluminum. Sprockets usually come in two flavors, uh, aluminum and steel. Aluminum is lighter, but it wears faster. Steel is heavier, but it wears slower. You can have it for the lifetime of your bike, pretty much. Uh, most bikes come stock with a steel sprocket, at which you almost never have to change, but you will after riding the bike for a few years. With the aluminum, you know, it depends on how often you ride, they go relatively quickly, but in my experience, I've had this sprocket on for, oh God knows how long. So here's how a new sprocket's supposed to look. And this is after a little bit of use, uh, about maybe a uh, year and a half. So you see, you know, there's a little bit of wear. In general, uh, they don't wear that quickly and I've had pretty good experiences with using these for a long time. All right, so. Seventy-two foot-pounds each nut, and I am going to show you. See that they tell you to uh, tighten it in a star pattern. Now we have to do the front sprocket, and one of the things that will really help is to. Put it in the gear, using my trusty, uh, and let's get it loosened. Impacts are amazing. If they can make an impact with the torque sensor in it, so that when you like torque it down, you can set it and you can just torque it down and zoom, done. That would be absolutely amazing. Right. And this should be able to come straight out. Just like that. Old sprocket and a bigger sprocket. If you could see, one thing to note too, I don't know if you can see this, one side has a longer, it's, it's, there's like more edge on this side than on this side, which is kind of important because when you put it in there, you want your chain to be aligned. I think I remember hearing saying that you always want the lettering out. Let's give that a shot. All right. Uh, I think that's right. So lettering out, I'm gonna put this nut that was hold, like that was there, and the boss nut. Now the owner's manual actually says to replace this every time you remove it, but who's gonna buy a bunch of boss nuts? Anyway, like on this boss nut, if you can see, there's a lip here, and you'll see. Like, make sure that it's facing out, because when you put it back on, on the top edge, you know, like a shelf, and on the bottom edge, there's a 
oh, there's the exact same shelf. And that shelf is basically to to hammer these these lips in a way so that they uh, so that it holds it in place even better. 61 foot pounds. You want to take a screwdriver, perfectly flathead, and where that shelf is, you want to flatten that lip um, at that point, and that basically makes it so it won't back out, which is incredibly important. You don't want this thing to come off while you're riding, especially at extremely high speeds. And one on the bottom as well. And we're pretty much done with gearing. Now the only consideration now at this point, when you change the size of the sprocket in the front, you know, make it bigger in the rear, make it smaller, now you have to readjust your chain. Your chain's not gonna have the same slack. So the way we're gonna readjust, ah, uh, moving back here, is through our, you know, our axle, rear axle adjuster. It's fun. Huh, actually, looking at about one and a half inches of play. Okay, so normally you would have to, whenever you make a gearing change, check your chain tension again and make sure it's not off. But it looks actually pretty good to me here, so I'm not going to change. I'm not gonna adjust my rear axle, so I'm good there. That should be about it. I mean, okay, okay. So, I need to get my fairings back on. Easy enough to do. I should probably clean my wheels. My wheels are pretty dirty. I mean, like, you know, they're yellow. Now, when you choose like a bright color, like yellow, white, it gets dirty a lot easier. But the upside is, if you have people that are watching you race, they're easier to find. Uh, basically, my wife, coming out to one of my first races at Daytona, I just had a really plain blue bike with the regular black wheels, and she said that she couldn't find me. Like, she couldn't, everyone else had pretty much the same bike, color bike. So when I got the yellow, boom, like right away she was like, oh, I can see where you are right away. So that's pretty cool. So that's something to consider, but again, your wheels get a lot dirtier. If you don't care, no big deal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean them up. And you know, and then the regular maintenance, I'm gonna clean and lube the chain as well as, that should be about, that should be about it, you know? So if nothing else, I will see you at Daytona then. So if you found this kind of helpful, entertaining, great or whatever else. If you liked it, please show me that you liked it by leaving me a thumbs up down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next one. Oh, and uh, one more thing is, uh, so I, I said in the beginning of this video that I, tra I was traveling for the last like three weeks or so. If you want to see a little break of pace from the regular bike stuff that I'm doing here, uh, my wife basically logged our entire vacation, you know, the weekends that we spent out in different cities. So go, I will leave a link in her channel below as well as somewhere around here and go check her channel out. It's fun, it's lighthearted, it's silly at times and yeah, I mean, why not? So anyway, I'll see you next one.